Hi, I'm DT Mr C and today I'm going to talk to you about forces. Right, there's five that you need to know about. They are tension, compression, bending, torsion and shear. I'll tell you about each one in more detail now. Number one, tension. Forces acting in opposite directions to stretch or pull an object apart, like a tug of war or the chain holding up a swing in a playground. Right, to demonstrate tension, we've got a tug of war. We've got two people pulling really hard in opposite directions. They're stretching that rope. The rope is in tension because it's being stretched and pulled apart. And the lead's in tension because the dog's pulling on it and the owner's pulling back to stretch the lead. But more about tension later on. Force number two is compression. Look, it's even got the word press in the middle of it. This is where forces act towards each other to press something together or squash it. In the picture, the chair leg is being squashed or compressed. This is because the person's weight's pushing down, but the ground is pushing back up, causing it to squash. When I push my hands towards each other and try and squash this glue stick, it's really good at resisting compression forces. Force number three is bending. Some objects need to be able to withstand bending forces, like the bench there, otherwise it would break. I've put four pieces of spaghetti between two baked bean tins and put a biscuit on top, and the, um, the biscuit is causing the spaghetti to bend. If I take that off and put a chocolate orange on, I don't think the spaghetti will be able to resist the bending forces. There you go, it's broken. Force number four, torsion. This is a name for a twisting force. The person holding the screwdriver is giving a clockwise force, but the screw itself is actually providing an anti-clockwise force. This means that the screwdriver blade, the metal part, is being twisted in opposite directions, so it has to be good in torsion. And keys also need to be able to withstand mm -hmm. twisting and torsion forces. So that they can turn inside the lock. Breadstick, rubbish in torsion, because when you twist it, it just breaks. Tastes nice. Mm -hmm. Force number five is shear. This is where objects slide past each other. Right, looking at these scissors, you can see that the two blades move in opposite directions, but they don't quite line up. And when you put a piece of paper inside like this, shear forces cut the paper. Right, we've also got some garden shears that do the same thing as scissors. They're actually called shears because like scissors they use shear forces to cut through things. Go on all. There you go. So Mr C, how does knowing about forces help me? Well, that's a very good question, John. Well, the main thing is, on exams, they quite often will ask you to name forces or describe forces, and you have to use the correct terminology. And the kind of questions you might ask for basic one mark would be something like, what is the correct name for a twisting force? And you would say, torsion. Or they might ask a two mark question, like an explain one, which could be something along the lines of what explain what kind of force a chair leg would have to withstand. You would say a chair leg would have to withstand compression. And for the second mark, you have to give a reason because it's an explain question. So you would say it would have to withstand compression so that it doesn't break when somebody sat on it. They might also ask you how can materials and objects be strengthened or reinforced. Reinforced is one of the key words at GCSE. Now I've got a few examples for you here. The important thing to note, first of all, is that you shouldn't just say all oh, things are reinforced to make them stronger. It's a bit childish and a bit basic that, and you have to be more specific. For example, a washing line. Uh, quite a lot of washing lines are made from plastic. They've got uh, polypropylene or PVC plastic on the outside, but they've got galvanized steel on the inside. And the purpose of the steel is to make the washing line stronger in tension, not just stronger, stronger in tension. This is so that it doesn't snap when it's been stretched between two points and washing has been hung off it. Another example is plywood. Now plywood is made up from layers of wood glued together. Each layer is at 90 degrees to the last one. It's reinforced to be able to withstand bending forces. 
you also need to understand uh, stiffening. So some materials are stiffened to make them more rigid, which means that they don't bend quite as easily. Corrugated cardboard is an excellent example of this. It's got a fluted layer in the middle that stops it from bending. This makes it suitable for packaging heavy objects. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about forces with DT Mr. C. Mr. C! What is it, Mum? Your tea's ready! Gotta go, my tea's ready. Bye!